Today we're going to continue our exploration of the ERC20 interface by focusing on how tokens are transferred. In addition, I'll look at some scams and risks that many people are not aware of. When transferring tokens using an ERC20 contract, we typically use four methods, transfer, allowance, approve, and transfer from. The simplest method of transferring is a simple tr direct transfer. In this case, if Alice wants to transfer 10 tokens to Bob, then Alice can directly call the transfer method on the ERC20 contract which will decrement Alice's balance by 10 and increment Bob's balance by 10. The second approach using a proven transfer from is slightly more complicated. It's typically used when you have a third party which is granted permission to transfer tokens on behalf of a user. Let's look at an example. Let's say Alice wants to sell some of her tokens through Uniswap. In that case, Alice can grant Uniswap permission to transfer tokens on Alice's behalf. Later on, when Bob wishes to buy Alice's tokens through Uniswap, Bob can send a payment to Uniswap. Then, when Uniswap receives the payment, Uniswap can call transfer from to send the tokens from Alice to Bob on Alice's behalf. This is convenient for Alice because Alice does not have to directly call the ERC20 contract to make the transfer. Instead, Alice can give permission to Uniswap and then Uniswap can take care of handling the payment and the transferring on Alice's behalf. ERC20 contracts keep track of the allowances through a mapping of mappings. In this case, for example, Alice has given Charlie permission to transfer 10 of her tokens, and she's given Dan permission to transfer 15 of her tokens, and she's given Aaron permission to transfer 20 tokens. Every time you call the approve method to give permission to someone to transfer tokens on your behalf, then this, the ERC20 smart contract has to update its allowances variable to keep track of how much that person is allowed to spend. This is obviously a write transaction and not a read, and it therefore incurs a fee. If you've used an exchange before, such as Uniswap, then you're probably familiar with this window where you're being asked, do you want to allow Uniswap to spend your token? If you give permission, then you're allowing Uniswap to withdraw your tokens and automate the transactions for you, and then there's a fee associated with that. If you have many different tokens to exchange, then you have to go through this approval window many times and the transaction fees add up. To make things more convenient for their users, many exchanges give users the ability to grant unlimited approvals. Unlimited approvals are definitely convenient because they let users avoid the hassle of going through all those manual approvals, and that also saves on transaction costs. However, when you grant unlimited approval, you also carry the risk of having all your funds stolen. Unicats was a yield farming platform that offered super high returns. Many customers were eager to give Unicats unlimited approval because they quickly wanted to get in on the action before it was too late. However, these investors were scammed. What happened was that the investors deposited their funds on Unicats for some period of time. For example, maybe they were locking up liquidity for staking. After withdrawing their funds, the investors thought that they were safe. However, because Unicats still had unlimited approval, and therefore control over their tokens, then the, Unicat, the Unicat's founders were able to simply transfer their tokens and steal them. Bancor was another exchange that suffered from a similar vulnerability. Users gave Bancor unlimited approval. However, because of a bug in Bancor, an attacker was able to use that unlimited approval to steal their users' funds. When the bug was discovered, Bancor immediately told their users to revoke all their approvals that they had given to Bancor. Customers trusted Bancor, and that's why they gave Bancor unlimited approval. What no one anticipated was that the attacker was able to use that unlimited approval to take control of people's coins by transferring them to the attacker's wallets. Anytime you give unlimited approval, or any approval at all, you risk your funds. However, that doesn't mean you should never do it. Many of the biggest players in the DeFi space, such as Uniswap and Compounds, still use unlimited approvals. As an analogy, I would compare this to paying for a meal at your local restaurant with your credit card. If it's a well-established restaurant with many reviews, it's highly unlikely that your server is going to write down your credit card information and then use your card to make unauthorized purchases. On the other hand, if you're walking down an alley at night and someone comes out of an alley and offers to sell you a MacBook Pro for $10, you probably shouldn't give them your credit card. Anytime you use a new app or exchange, do careful research on the creators and then make a careful decision about how many of your funds you're willing to entrust to that third party.